This morning I received an email with a link to this video titled High Altitude Balloon 24 I See Stars by Dwayne Kellum. Dwayne has a number of excellent balloon flight videos on his channel and this one is no exception. As I was watching and simply enjoying the view, I noticed a lot of detail that we can use to debunk several flat earth claims. So let's take a look at those now. And the first point we're going to look at is seeing the stars at night with a camera. The correct exposure value needed to see the stars is generally very high and we can see by Duane's own settings that the ISO on his camera was 102,400. Now that is extremely high. Anyone who knows anything about photography will agree. But that was the setting he needed in order to see the stars in his footage. As a result, those settings are much too high for observing the moon correctly. And as you can see here, the moon is grossly overexposed. In order to see the moon correctly exposed, that ISO value would have to be reduced significantly down to one or 200 only. And that would allow us to see the detail of the moon, but it would be too low to see any of the stars. And this is the reason why we don't see stars in photographs like this taken from space. There you can see the moon is actually quite dull. We can see the surface detail and therefore the exposure value is correct for the moon, but that is much too low for the stars. I have addressed this myself with my own telescope looking at the moon and deliberately changing the exposure value to show you that relationship. I'll just play a short clip. This is the moon. You can see normal exposure, no stars. As I increase the exposure, the stars begin to appear. But you can see the moon is so overexposed that even the non-illuminated portion appears bright. So when flat earthers ask why we cannot see stars in these photographs, the answer is simple. The exposure value is too low. The subject of this photograph is the earth and the moon, not the stars. In order to see the stars, the subject would be grossly overexposed, as you can see in this image. So Duane's balloon flight confirms that in order to see the stars, the moon is overexposed. And the next thing I noticed was the detailed telemetry data at the bottom of the video, specifically the barometric pressure. When the balloon is first launched, it shows a reading of 29.88 inches of mercury. Later in the video, when the balloon is above 120,000 feet, that barometric pressure has dropped to just 0.15 inches of mercury. That means at altitude, the pressure is just 0.5% of what it was at ground level. So Duane's video also confirms that the atmosphere has a pressure gradient and the pressure reduces significantly with altitude. Looking at this graph of air pressure within the atmosphere, we can see that at ground level, the pressure is the highest. And as the altitude is gained, this red line shows the atmospheric pressure is reducing. When you get up to altitudes of 30 and 40 kilometers, this pressure is significantly lower than what it was at sea level. And that debunks the flat earth claim of a vacuum cannot exist next to air pressure without a container. The reality is the air pressure is progressively reducing. At 120,000 feet, it is just 0.5% of what it was at ground level and continuing higher, that pressure reduces further and further progressively until it reaches values that are considered to be a vacuum. So there is no vacuum directly alongside higher pressure. It reduces progressively as altitude is gained. So thanks to Duane's balloon footage, the pressure gradient is confirmed. We see the air pressure reducing from 29.88 inches of mercury at ground level to 0.15 inches of mercury above 120,000 feet. And that value is just 0.005 
of the ground level pressure. You can do the math on that yourself. 0 0.15 divided by 29.88 and then multiply by 100 to get a percentage. 0.5%. A significant reduction in 120,000 feet as you continue higher that continues to reduce until it reaches values considered a vacuum. So the air pressure at 120,000 feet is just 0.5% of what it is at ground level. Please keep that in the back of your mind as we discuss the next point. And this relates to aircraft flying around the globe and one of the most ridiculous claims the flat earth community makes. And that is that an aircraft would fly off into space if the pilot did not continually lower the nose. Nothing could be further from the truth and we're going to look at some of the forces involved with aircraft flight that will explain that. So any pilot will tell you that in flight an aircraft is subjected to four main forces. Those forces are weight and lift opposing the weight, drag from the forward motion and the thrust which opposes that drag. Both thrust and lift are produced by accelerating air. In the case of lift, the wing accelerates the air downwards and the reaction to that is the force of lift. Thrust is produced by the propeller or by a jet engine by accelerating the air rearwards and the reaction to that is called thrust. Clearly, we need air to produce lift and we need air to produce thrust. But what happens to the amount of air available as we gain altitude? As we just saw, increasing altitude means the air pressure is reducing. And that means we have less air available to generate lift and to produce thrust. An aircraft that is climbing, even with full throttle, will experience a continual reduction in the amount of thrust being produced. And eventually it reaches a point where it cannot climb any further. In aeronautics, this is known as the absolute ceiling. And I'll just read this first paragraph. The absolute ceiling is the highest altitude at which an aircraft can sustain level flight. Due to the thin air at higher altitudes, a much higher true airspeed is required to generate sufficient lift on the wings. The absolute ceiling is therefore the altitude at which the engines are operating at maximum thrust, yet only generate enough thrust to match the drag of the aircraft. Hence, the aircraft will not have any excess capacity to accelerate or climb further. At absolute ceiling, the aircraft can no longer accelerate, since any acceleration will lead to higher airspeed and therefore excess drag. Stated technically, it is the altitude where the maximum sustained with no decreasing airspeed rate of climb is zero. So as you know, the aircraft that I fly is a Bombardier Global Express corporate jet. It is a high performance, high altitude aircraft capable of cruising at 51,000 feet. Now this is the certified altitude. The absolute ceiling would be slightly higher but there is no way I could take this aircraft into space, even if I tried. At 51,000 feet, there is minimal excess thrust to accelerate further. And if I continued to try to climb by applying full throttle and pulling back on the yoke, the airspeed would simply reduce, the aircraft would stall and it would then fall. And this is why the flat earth claim of aircraft flying off into space is absolutely ludicrous. It simply will not happen. Aerodynamic limits are there because of the reduction in air pressure as we go higher and the aircraft will not go above its absolute ceiling. So I just wanted to say thanks Dwayne for another excellent video. Keep up the good work.